With the Tarot Axe, it feels like Specialized is trying to create a new category of bike. Is it a commuter? Is it a mountain bike? Or did Specialized actually find a way to make it do both? I'm Justin with Electrobike Report, and today we're going to be reviewing the Specialized Turbo Taro X 5.0. That's the version that Specialized sent to us. It is the second from the top level. Um, and when we got it, at first glance, there's a lot of things on this bike that just screamed commuter to us, right? Like you have fenders, you have a pannier rack, you have lights, you even had a bell up top, you had commuter pedals, and you had a kickstand. All of those things scream commuter. They don't call, come on a mountain bike. But then we looked at the components, and that's where we started to kind of think a little bit differently. You have code brakes, you have 130 mil 100 in the front, 120 mil in the rear rock shock suspension. It's a real decent, you know, XE type suspension. You have SRAM GX derailleur, a 200 mil dropper post. You even have a mullet set up where you have a 29 inch in the front, 27 and a half in, in the rear with good, you know, mountain bike style tires. But then to top it all off, you have a full power EMTB motor. It's the Specialized 2.0 that comes with this 70 Newton meters of torque. And if you go up to the, the next level of Taro X, you can get the Specialized 2.2 motor, which is the exact same motor that's on the Turbo Levo Comp Carbon that we, were, we are reviewing right now. So all of those combined kind of say that this is a legit EMTB. So when we decided how are we gonna test this, we decided to put it one through our, our standard barrage of tests that we would do with any commuter, see how it did. But then two, we had to take it to the trails. So we took it out to our local XC track where they've done the state NICA XC race the last two years, because that'll really push it. And then after that, we decided, hell, let's take this and push it even further. And we took it out to Gooseberry Mesa. And stick with us, because after I go through the initial testing, I'm gonna talk about how it did on the trail. So first up is the brake test, where we try to answer the question, how safe, how comfortable does the bike break? Now, the Terrax 5.0 version comes with the SRAM Kodar brakes. They're 200 mil rotors in the front, 180 mil rotors in the rear, four piston brakes, so they're really good hydraulic disc brakes. Um, and we kind of saw that in the results. You know, on our brake test, we have Griffin, who's 230 pounds. He, he goes and he gets up to 20 miles per hour three times, stops three times, then we take the average. And the Terrax's numbers are right in at 21 feet and 11 inches, which again is really good. Um, I then took it out on the trail and we took out at Gooseberry um, and did and really kind of pushed the brakes on some of those steep rollers that they have out there. And I can say it was very comfortable, no squeaking, all the stopping power, good modulation. Just to be honest, the brakes felt really good on the trail. So overall, two thumbs up on the brakes with the, with the Taro X 5.0. All right, so now the speed test, where we answer the question of how fast can the bike go at each PAS level. So the Taro X comes with three levels, Eco, Trail, and Turbo. And we left all the settings as is out of the box. And at Eco, we got right around 20 miles, for the, 20 miles per hour for the max speed. At Trail, we got 22.7 miles per hour, and at Turbo, 27.1. And really, those results are exactly in line, in line with what we would want out of a commuter e-bike. This is a class three commuter, so there is no throttle, right? Um, so it's pedal assist up to 28 miles per hour, and our speed test shows that yes, you actually do get very close to 28 miles per hour on this, which is fantastic. And I will argue, again, analyzing this just as a commuter, 
that you really do want to be in a class three if you're doing actual commuting because if you have to get on the road and compete with a car, being able to go 28 miles per hour, it actually does make it more safe. Um, and so yes, this feels very fast. That motor, it's the, Bro, it's the specialized 2.0 version that they make in conjunction with Broza. It had the 70 newton meters of torque, 250 watts nominal, but it peaks at 470 watts. And how specialized, you know, kind of breaking all that lingo down, I think they're genius when they say this motor is three times you. So what watts and power you're putting in, it's gonna give you three times out. And I can say in doing the speed test and riding this around, the bike feels very fast, feels zippy. And yes, it gets you up to that 28 miles per hour, but you feel very well in control the entire time. And this is absolutely a bike that is fast enough and controlled enough and comfortable enough to be a really good commuter. On to the range test. And we're, I mean, the range test, we answer the question of how far can the bike go, right? And Specialized has claimed up to 80 miles of range on this bike. Now, when we tested this in Eco on our local path trails here, we got 73.75 miles at averaging 14.3 miles per hour. So right up to that, that claimed range um, by Specialized, you know, there is, it is a mid-drive torque sensor motor, so it, you know, you could definitely get more if you kind of soften pedaled a little bit more. Um, but frankly, I think that's a really good range. On the turbo setting, so if you want to get to work and not sweat at all, um, we got 36.13 miles at an average speed of 23.55 miles per hour. So it was moving, it was zippy, and 36 miles is a good range on turbo. You know, the battery, which is nicely integrated into that down tube, it's that 710 watt hours. It, it's, it's got a lot of juice. It's gonna get you really far. And let's say you did run out of battery for some reason, the bike pedals just really well. That's where, you know, the advantage of, of getting a bike like this from a brand like Specialized that is dove headfirst into the e-bike world. I mean, it, it still just pedals, you know, it's quiet to where even when you're going on turbo, a lot of people don't realize you're on an e-bike. And when that power cuts out, yeah, your, your speeds are gonna go down, but you're going to be able to get home even though it is a 60 pound bike. So again, any of you that have some range anxiety, that 710 watt hour battery is gonna get you more than likely anywhere you need to go and beyond. On to the hill test where we'll take you out to hell hole and you'll see kind of what this bike can do in terms of hill climb, right? Everybody, when they buy an e-bike, one of the biggest advantages is it can climb a hill and you're not dead at the top. So how well did the Tarot X do? Let's send you out to hell hole where you can ride along with me for both the test in, in turbo power and in eco power. Okay, so now we're on the Tarot X from Specialized. This is kind of their commuter slash honestly go anywhere bike. Um, I was curious to see how this does on Hell Hole. Also, just like the Levo debated on whether I should do it here or somewhere else. But as a commuter, I think it was important to do it here. And also, it is a really good hill to test the torque and the power. And I'll be able to compare this to the Levo and kind of have some good data on, you know, how it does. So I'm in turbo right now. As you tell, like, I'm not cranking this. I'm not going for PR or anything. This is more to test the motor. You know, I'm breathing a little bit. But I could have a decent conversation at this pace. Um, motor feels good. It's a little louder, I think, than the one on the Levo. You can hear that. In this section, here's the one where you got to shift and, you know, but it's not bad, down to about 8.2, 8 8.3 miles per hour. So compared to the Levo, I don't think it's as strong. That's just my guess. Um, we'll see what the time says. But in general, if you need to tackle a big hill and you don't want to put in a ton of work, this one's going to do just fine. And really comfortable, actually, as well. It's kind of that cross commuter slash XC bike. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're in round two at the Terror X. I'm an eco. Um, we're gonna see what this feels like. You know, it's definitely not heavy from an e-bike standard, but still a bit more than a regular bike. Uh, in fact, on the way down, I just passed someone pedaling on their normal bike and they were probably going maybe two miles an hour. So we'll see, I'm down to about seven. Still really good engagement from the motor, but I'm definitely gonna have to work more on this one. Um, definitely less power than on the Levo Comp Carbon that I just tested. But in general, I mean, this is hellhole. This is a really steep hill, so I would test them here. And this for sure will make it up. You can tell I'm a bit more out of breath on this one if you watch our Levo review. But not bad. Um, motor noise sounds about the same as it was in turbo. My legs are screaming at me just a little bit, but not too bad. Um, and I say this does feel easier than a normal bike for sure, especially you know, like a commuter type bike. Um, so I'm down just over five right here. It's a little hard to like keep my output exactly the same, but I do try to stay fairly consistent. And I think it'll be a good comparison against the other mid-drive bikes out there. So we'll see what the data says. But overall, yeah, I'm pleased with it. Um, good solid mid-drive, good quality motor, and can definitely tackle hellhole. So you can, you can see from the footage and what I talked about, the Turbo Terex did really well. On turbo, it climbed in a minute 41 seconds, which is an average of 10.7 miles per hour. On eco, it took 140 seconds at an average speed of 7.7 .7 miles per hour. Now, that's a steep hill. It's an average of 12% grade, so there are some sections that are a little steeper. It's a third of a mile long, and it is pretty taxing. Um, but if you are someone that needs to climb hills, this is going to do a good job. You're still gonna to have to put in some power. It is 3X times U, but you can take it pretty casually, kick it in turbo, and climb almost the steepest hill that you'll be able to find. So now, how did the Taro X handle on the single track? You know, as we mentioned before, when we got the bike, we looked at it, at those components that just scream commuter, and we're kind of skeptical. The more we dove into the specs and the components, it was, okay, I was getting really excited. I really wanted to take this out on our local XC track and see how it did. Because our local XC, we're in Southern Utah where it's rocky and technical, and our XC track is a little more rocky, a little more challenging than a lot of other typical cross country, you know, light single track is. And to be honest, it, it really surprised us. It handled that, tr that course very well and was a ton of fun. Um, the suspension felt great. The tires were specced really well. I love the mullet design that they did on this. That's one of the biggest positives for me of this bike because when you're commuting, it doesn't matter as much, but when you take this out on the trail, I love the 29 out in front so it can roll over things. I love the mullet, the 27.5 in the rear. It's, it's just kind of a style of bike that I'm personally liking a, little, a lot more recently. It's just, it's more nimble, a little more fun, and that is what the Taro X was on the trail. Um, if I was going to be commuting a lot, but also wanted to hit an XC trail, you're gonna be great. Now, it did so well on our XC course that we decided, hey, let's use this as the follow bike when we shot the Turbo Levo and we took it out to Gooseberry. And I apologize, we don't have footage of that um, because frankly, it did better than what we expected. If this was the only bike that you had and you wanted to take it to someplace super technical, rocky, you can totally get through. Um, it's not as good as the Turbo Levo, of course, but it's still a bike that again, if that's all you have, when you get home at the end of the day, you're still gonna have a big smile on your face. It handled the rock climbs, the, the super steep rock climbs that handled that chunk, you know, when we had some downhill sections and just really did perform well, even on that more technical, much more challenging trail. Okay, so going back to our original question, 
Is the Taro X a commuter or is it a mountain bike or a specialized found a way to create something that does both well? I'm going to answer yes to that question. They did a great job and have created a bike that is kind of in its own category. It, you know, who do I think this bike is for? I, when, when I'm going to go back to specialized kind of marketing lingo where they say the tagline for this bike is you're going to need a bigger map. I think that indicates you're starting off with someone that commutes to work a lot. As a commuter, A+, plus, very fast, very responsive, great range. Frankly, you're going to love the suspension on this and how comfortable that ride is. So it's an A plus commuter. But now let's expand your map. Let's hit your local trails. Let's take this bike packing. Let's go off road and really adventure more with the Taro X. That's what they've built. And I think they have done a fantastic job. So I'm going to give two thumbs up to the Taro X for that person who is looking to expand their map, who's looking for a commuter and doesn't want to have to buy a mountain bike in addition to, but still wants to hit their local trails, that still wants to bike pack, that still wants to go further, go farther, and just have a big smile on their face. So I hope this review was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, think we left something out, you can leave those in the comments below. You'll also see a link to our full in-depth review. Um, so please go read through that. You'll see all, all the photos of the place we took it. You'll see more specs, etc. We are diving more into the MTB space. We have the Turbo Levo carbon review coming up soon. And so definitely hit that bell and subscribe to the channel so you'll get notified when that review comes up. And again, I hope this review is helpful and I hope to see you out on the trail soon.